Welcome to the shooting show. This week we follow Irishman Jason Doyle and Will O'Meara out to New Zealand in pursuit of Himalayan tar. Plus we bring you all the latest news from the shooting world. Finally here anyway. We've just flown in to, to set up camp. Got dropped off by the helicopter a few minutes ago. And um, absolutely beautiful place to camp. We have a nice river here beside us for fresh water. And the uh, scenery around here is stunning. So Ben from Big Game Hunting New Zealand and my buddy Will are just setting up to camp. And as soon as we have that done, we're gonna start having a glass in this valley and probably just looking around here, it's going to take a couple of hours to glass what's here and then for the afternoon try and get some height probably up to the, to the mountain on the right hand side here and Ben's hoping to see if we can at least spot some animals and see where they're hanging out and then we'll know exactly where we're going to go in the morning but I'm really excited to be here, it's been a long time coming and so far it's, the scenery is just absolutely stunning, it's exactly what I'd hoped for. Pretty cool, wasn't it? Yeah. How close did you get? Oh, it would have been about five meters. Come right up from behind that rock there, and uh, just come straight into camp to have a look around. But just a young, young doe, I think. But or maybe a year old. Oh, probably not even that. Probably born last spring, so about seven, eight months. Cool. Yeah, awesome. Gonna find something that's got more horns on it now. Where are we going? Uh, we're going to head up here probably. We get up there quite high and have a look around and see if we can't spot something. There's a few a couple of three tar up here on this face. There's probably some more in there that we can't see. And, uh, yeah, see so how we go. Hopefully we can find a ball in there somewhere. Let's crack on. Yeah, let's do it. Altitude. Altitude, attitude. Uh, over all the noise of the conversation that you were having with your camera. Now we heard a chamois just over here. Maybe a hundred yards from us. Just one little gully over, 100 yards. Just coming downhill, it had probably seen us coming up or heard us. And it crossed over two little gullies and uh, headed back uphill again. So they're here.
Yeah, we'll probably have some bricky and finish our covers and we'll head up the valley a bit further and have a look around and hopefully some tar will fed down overnight and probably on their way back up the hill but see if we can't um, find a bull and uh, maybe see where he beds up and hopefully plan a stalk on him but the weather's a bit clearer this morning so if we can't see him low they're bound to be up high so fingers crossed we can find a bull. If we don't see anything we'll come back and come up with another plan but if we do see stuff we'll probably stay up there all day or the minute. And more importantly what's for breakfast? <laughs> Um, creamy honey porridge with some nuts, a bit of sugar and some milk. Keep us going for a few hours, I think. I like the bush version of Gordon Ramsay. Yeah, <laughs> Eat some food and you say f*** <laughs> up. <laughs> the boys just spotted some tar in the spotting scops. Right up there. And um, I think it's just nannies and kids. There's no way we'd be able to get up there anyway. I don't think so anyway. So we're gonna go up this, up this face behind us here, and hook round into the right, and that should open up more ground for us. So that's gonna be a bit of a climb. Put the camera away now and do a bit more filming when we get up there. Up there is where we saw the tower earlier. So we've just come round it, 90 degrees so we can get a better view onto it. See if we can see those animals. And um, I don't know if we can if we can make an approach on them from here. But yeah, beautiful place. Um, when we started this morning, you can just see right down in the bottom of that valley is where our camp is. See yeah, that, stunning place. Um, really testy, hard on the legs, but really enjoying it so far. So here we are, day three of our tar hunt. Um, we've come away from the west coast. We saw we saw some animals, and we didn't see any bulls. But the the weather was due to break today, so we were only we were only intending on spending two days there. And we've come in onto the east coast of the divide now. And it's, um, I thought the west coast was, was pretty stunning, but this is, to be honest, this is equally equally beautiful. And um, we saw we saw Bull just as we flew in in the chopper. He's probably probably three or four k back back down the valley there. So we're gonna we, we dump some gear. Helicopter dropped us off further down the valley, and we dump some gear there. We're gonna work our way down to there tonight and hunt this valley, blast the slopes, and see if we can see if we can get in on some tar. We're not gonna chopper back out of here. It's about a two day walk down to the truck. So we're going to hunt our way back down and camp, but we are really excited. This is absolutely stunning here. These um, these Alps are like nothing I've ever seen. So um, I think I think the legs are going to get a good workout today. We've just spotted. Three tar, I think, right at the top of right at the top of that mountain over there. Um, don't know if don't know if that's possible to get to. It's good. It's a good probably four or five kilometers away from here, and it's really steep there. It's, it's well above the, the brush line. But at least we spotted some. Um, we've seen where they've bedded down right in the tops. They'll bed down now for the day. So we're going to work our way up this valley a bit further. See if we can see anything that we can have a stock at this morning. And if not, we'll pick a spot where, where we think they're going to come down and feed and wait for the evening.
That's our objective. We were really unlucky yesterday evening. We stayed out on the mountain right till edge of dark. We'd seen two really big bulls and they'd started to move down towards the feeding area and we thought that if, if we stayed there they'd have come in towards us but unfortunately they just stayed at a, at a distance that we couldn't shoot them, they 600 yards. And um, we, we stayed right till the edge of dark. Um, and it was a really, really difficult climb back down. We'd climbed a thousand meters yesterday from the camp up to where we were where we'd seen the bulls so um, tough day big big day and my legs are my legs are in bits today so we've had a we've had a good climb up this morning in the dark just to, to last this valley below where we were yesterday and we spotted a bull right across on the scree on the face opposite and we've lost sight of him now but um, I've elected to stay back here and keep an eye on him and see where he beds down for the day. And the boys are heading round the scree slope further down the valley to, to look into a, there's a, a small valley that runs off this one. So um, Superior Fitness is allowing them to go and do that. And I'm going to sit here and rest because, to be honest, my legs are pretty shot from the last three days. really really unlucky yesterday evening he was we could have shot him where he was he was down to 330 yards had a real good rest but where he was if he'd have dropped on the spot he wasn't recoverable so we needed him to come another maybe 10 meters down and he just disappeared out of sight behind the ridge and appeared on the ridge in a shootable position where we could have recovered him with no backstop and he stayed there for maybe 40 seconds and I just needed him to come in off the skyline and we had him but unfortunately he just turned and went over the ridge and we waited there for another till dark another hour and a half and we never saw him again but um, there this area is so steep in the tops that where they bed down for the day you can't stalk them it's just inaccessible so Ben has decided we're going to pull the pin here today we're going to get a good breakfast, pack up our gear and head down for the lake which is right down that valley behind me. It's a it's a whole day's walk so probably, probably between 15 and 20k he says and we're walking in the riverbed so no footpaths or anything it's just going to be on rocks but big day today will get us out of here back to the ute and he has another spot in mind for the next couple of days where um, even if we see the bulls bed down we'll be able to stalk them during the day. So um, yeah, been, this valley's been amazing, um, beautiful place, we've seen a lot of, lot of tar. We've had lots of half chances and um, just need that little bit of luck now to pull the trigger.
Fire. Ooh. Come on, buddy. Well done. Body length of that backstop. It's definitely an easier spot to get there than he was. We should be able to come up here, I reckon we'll go back down. If, if we can get onto that grass, we'll just come straight up the grass yep. into that chute. Tuck in and that black little triangular rock. Yep, it's that's where he is. Yeah, he's yep, just he's right there. <laughs> That was the conclusion of my tower hunt anyway. We have day six now, about halfway through. We had some really bad luck early in the week, just not to get a shot, but came up here. We saw this guy at first light bedding down and had a hell of a climb. We probably climbed probably over a kilometer, a pretty steep ground, steepest I've ever climbed anyway. And got into a position, we were 270 yards from him. And he, he stood up just when we got here and we got set up for a shot but he wasn't really accessible where he was. So we said we'd wait, and we've waited probably two hours for him to stand up again. And unfortunately he was going the wrong way, the way we didn't want him to go. So rather than lose him round the, round the skyline onto the far bluff, um, Ben gave the okay to take him where he was. So um, didn't really want him running where we couldn't see him. So went for a neck shot, low neck, to drop him on the spot. And he's tumbled down into some bluffs. And it's going to be pretty hard to get to him, so um, we're going to pack the camera away and we'll be going down more or less the direction we climbed up and then try and come across the scree and find the trophy. But it's going to be a little bit dangerous going down, too dangerous to film, so pack the camera away now and hopefully in an hour, hour and a half we should have, we should have our trophy. That's where we've come from down there. And the skyline up there, that big bluff is where the bull is. 30 meters behind that, so the boys have just gone ahead to see if there's a if there's a route up. I'm gonna hang here with the camera. Safely return from Operation Certain Death. Well, we tried until dark yesterday evening to collect my trophy. Um, myself and Will from the bottom tried a couple of routes, and Ben tried from the top. And in the end, I just had to tell Ben to come away. He was it was getting dangerous where he was wanting to climb down just to get my tar. Um, it's a pity we we didn't retrieve it, but it does happen out here. Um, ben was confident that if if I managed to drop him on the spot, if I managed to neck shoot him, that um, he'd tumble all the way to the bottom, and he so nearly did. Um, he disappeared behind the rock, still had momentum, but when we went around to the bottom of that chute, he wasn't there. So he'd got snagged in a in a rock somewhere. It does happen out here. It happens quite regularly, to be honest, with tar hunting because the areas they are are so high that you can't retrieve a trophy. So we're, we're going to sit tight and see if the weather picks up in the afternoon. So we've come back out for a second day to 
try and find the ball I shot today. Myself and Will have come up the mountain on the opposite side and gained more height than we had on the far side when when I shot the ball. And we're just looking with the with the spotting scope now to see if he's if he's um, hung up somewhere on a rock and see if we can make another approach in the afternoon. But we'll we'll keep working hard at it and we'll we'll do everything we can. Well, unfortunately, we'd last we'd last really hard there for a couple of hours, but no sign of my bull. We've looked for two days now, and that's just the the curse of the terrain sometimes. But while we were glassing for my bull, um, Will spotted in the spotting scope another big bull up on this mountain behind me here and he went after that on his own. Will's been sort of following me all week and working the camera for me and hadn't had much opportunity himself to shoot. So he scooted on up there nearly a mile and um, he's managed to shoot a, a whopper bull. So I'm going to head up to him as quick as I can and um, see what it's like. What a savage hunt. Some animal, aren't they? We spent uh, nine days hunting straight. We've probably walked over a hundred kilometers. We've climbed up to 2,100 meters above sea level. We've hobbled home, fell into bed. Recharged the battery with seven hours sleep and gone for gold again every day, pushing harder, every day glassing, walking, climbing, just persevering. And today it happened, today it all came together. A savage stalk spotted over a K away, stalked in, had to bypass uh, a young bull at about 500 meters. Got in past him, had to do some rock climbing. It was like something out of a movie <laughs> at one stage. Climbing up slabs of rock and uh, knew where he was, got in, could see around the corner, just a glint of his uh, savage horns just glinting in the sunlight. And got into position. I uh, had a good rest for the rifle, but my own position was fairly unconventional. 107 yards, and uh, he was lying. He was just in position, he stood up, and uh, I took my chance, and uh, he dropped to the shot. What a truly magnificent animal. What a phenomenal hunt. Uh, ben Tamara of Big Game Hunting New Zealand has given us uh, just a phenomenal uh, holiday, a phenomenal hunt in public land, uh, a foot hunt. Um, the odds stacked against us earlier in the week, I had a misfire at 30 yards from a bull, less probably, on edge of dark. Um, just pull the trigger, click, primer stroke, round it and go. Um, Disappointing, but but the joy is in the process. The joy is in getting out here in this wilderness that is just unbelievable. It's it's just awe-inspiring. And every day, Ben pushing us and us pushing Ben and laughs and mugs of tea on the hill and just tucking in glassing and uh, it's been phenomenal. This morning we came up this valley, myself and Jason, and we were uh, just got to where we wanted to pitch our tent and uh, we saw some uh, heli hunters coming into the valley. And the heli flew in um, across ground we wanted to hunt uh, this evening. It uh, landed on ground we wanted to hunt tomorrow morning and it flew out, our second heli uh, flew out via um, the valley we hunt, wanted to hunt possibly tomorrow afternoon. Um, so we were like, <laughs> when is the when is our luck gonna change? Uh, and it changed. It changed at about three o'clock this afternoon when we spotted that bull, and I must have covered that 900 yards uh, to the firing position in in record time. I was uh, I was inspired by all of the work that 
that Jason has put in, that I've put in, that Ben has put in uh, over the last uh, nine days and, and it all came to fruition. And uh, what a phenomenal um, animal. What a phenomenal hunt. We're gonna go home, we're not, we're gonna go home to our, <laughs> to our tent and we're gonna have some, uh, some of the, the backstrap from this phenomenal animal. And uh, he's gonna come home and he'll be up on my wall to remind me of, of the savage days in, uh, in New Zealand. It's, it's awesome, it's truly awesome. Jason and Will there, living the dream in the New Zealand mountains. And now, it's the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. You should hold off on shooting woodcock this winter. That's what the GWCT's leading woodcock researcher has called for in response to a poor breeding season for the species. Andrew Hoodless said shoots should reduce their woodcock bags and think twice before pulling the trigger for the rest of the season. He said that populations normally rebound after such events, but most shooters understand the importance of preserving breeding stocks when there are signs of adverse natural events. Richard Folds has overhauled George Digweed to become the country's top sporting shooter. That's the tale told by the CPSA averages, which are now out. It was a memorable year for Olympic gold medalist Folds, who won the World Sporting among a host of other championships. Elsewhere, Austin Coxhead tops the DTL averages, Ed Ling's top in the UT, Mark Windsor tops the pile in Sport Trap and Matt Coward Holly is top of the charts in Olympic Trap. Read all about it in the January issue of Clay Shooting Magazine. If you're thinking of attending a Boxing Day hunt tomorrow, check out the Countryside Alliance's interactive map. It's got details of hunts all over England and Wales, from Cornwall to the borders. You can search by postcode and find out details of where and when to meet or contact the secretary of the local pack for more details. Head to the website on screen now to have a look. And finally, Christmas shopping may be finished but there are still great deals to be had on the best shooting magazines on the market. Airgun Shooter, Clay Shooting and Sporting Rifle are offering up to 40% off the cover price for a subscription, which means you save money as well as getting the magazine delivered to your door. With flash sales and bargains a regular occurrence, these mags really are better value than ever. Keep up with all the latest at myfavouritemagazines.co.uk. That was the Shooting Show News. Merry Christmas! Well, that's it for this week and for this year. A Merry Christmas to you all from all of us here at the Shooting Show team.